Today we're going to be making a seafood stew or better known as chipino. My name is James. I'm going to be your chef for this video today. And to give you a little bit of history about chipino, it was made or invented about a hundred years ago in the Bay Area in San Francisco. And it was literally, long story short, where the fishermen would take the ingredients or whatever they had left over for the day's catch and they would take it home, add some tomatoes and wine to it, and make a fish stew, a little soup. And this is what we know as chipino. It became very famous in the Bay Area, and today we have this recipe. So it's, again, a recipe that you can really modify if you want to, because it's basically whatever you have in the kitchen, you can use. Before we get going today, be sure to like the video down below, to subscribe to the channel, and let's get started. To start the recipe for the tomato broth, I'm going to be mincing some shallots, a bit of garlic, some whole canned tomatoes I'm going to be blending. I'm going to use some dried basil because I can't get any fresh in this conundrum that we're currently in right now, and then a bit of white wine. First we're going to peel and brunoise the shallots. Cut the top off, cut them in half and peel them, then cut them very thin. And cut them down the middle and just slice. You can cut to your own preference. For me, I'm going to cut them as small as possible. Take the garlic, cut off the end, smash them, and peel. And if you want, you can cut them just by slicing them and then slicing again. But me, because I have, I've been cutting a lot of these in my life, I can cut them very small. Just like the shallots. Oh, these shallots are very strong today. Just a quick tip, if you want to chop any vegetables or any onions, garlic, etc., what you're going to do is you're going to take the knife in your one hand, you're going to take the other hand and rest it on the palm of your hand here, the end, and you can either leave your fingers straight, it's very important, or curl them, but never like this. You always want them out of the way of the knife. Then you're going to use your other hand and you're going to rock. And you're slowly going to go forward. And you pass again and again and again. And you can keep doing that until you get more or less this size of anything that you want to chop. Now we're going to take a pot. You want a decent sized pot if you can, if you have one. Turn on the heat. You're going to add a bit of extra virgin olive oil. Okay, after the oil comes up to temperature, and you can tell actually by the ripples in the oil, if you can see, you're going to now add the shallots. Shallots in. And garlic. We're going to saute this for about two to three minutes. Keep an eye on it so it doesn't burn. Put it on medium to low heat and just let that cook. Okay, now we're going to blend the tomato sauce. Now, if you have a food mill, you can actually pass this through or I'm gonna show you a trick that we use in the kitchen sometimes. It's a little dangerous because it can splatter everywhere. Take off the top, take a hand blender now, like I said, it's a little dangerous and you need to be careful. And it's going to fit literally just inside. You have to be very careful though because like I said, I've seen many guys in the kitchen do this little cheat and then they fail. And you have tomato sauce literally all over the kitchen. And more or less, the shallots are cooked, they're translucent. Now we're going to add the white wine. We're going to let the wine reduce. For several minutes. You can add as much wine as you want. It's just going to add flavor and sweetness to it. And then I'm going to add a little bit of basil. If you add fresh basil, I would highly recommend adding fresh. Okay, now we're going to let this reduce. And then after this reduces, we're going to add the tomato sauce and then slowly let that cook for another 20 to 30 minutes. The wine is reduced. It's been a few minutes. And at this point, you can add the tomato sauce.
Now you're going to bring this up to a boil, let it simmer, and like I said, another 20-30 minutes on low heat, just to simmer. The reason why we're cooking it for so long is because when you simmer the tomatoes for a longer period and with all the other ingredients, it's reducing some of the quantity of the liquid, but it's also intensifying the flavors that are in it. This is why we're doing it. Now I'm gonna show you how to clean some of the seafood for the cipino, and we're about halfway done. Okay, now for the ingredients for the cipino. I have some mussels over here. I also have some frozen clams. I have a very large calamari, and I'm substituting the calamari for fish because, well, we're in the Mediterranean and it's a little too much for just one dish. I have some prawns, some large prawns, and a langoustine. So it's very easy to substitute any of these ingredients. If you want to use crab, you can. Even crayfish, if you want, you can. It doesn't matter. Now I'm going to give you a quick tip on how to clean some mussels. So normally when you buy fresh mussels, they have the barb on there. And there's a reason why it's on there, because they're alive. So the moment that you pull it, they're going to start dying. So you want to do this just before you cook, because otherwise they're going to go very bad very fast in the fridge. So to clean them, you're just going to take one, you're going to take the barb and pull it off, it's very easy, and then you can either take a knife and scrape the barnacles and the rest off, or you can take a scotch pad and scrape the rest of them off. Also, a very important note, if you get one that's open, even a little bit, and it doesn't want to close again, throw it out, it's not good. If it closes immediately, then it's still alive, but it's almost dead. So just keep that in mind. You can obviously buy frozen calamari if you want, but today I'm going to show you how to clean an actual fresh calamari. It's actually quite big. I prefer the smaller ones, they're easier to clean. First what you're going to do is you're going to take the head in one hand like this, and the body in the other hand. Now you're going to pull the head from the body, then you're going to take some scissors, and you see where the eyes are, you're going to cut with the scissors just beneath the eyes. And some, most of the time you take the beak with it because you want to take that out, you're not going to eat that, and you can throw that away. And then you want to double check that the beak is out. Okay, now for the top piece. You're going to have a few pieces of cartilage here that you're going to first pull out, and you're going to throw it away. And then you're going to have a few other pieces that it's not nice, you're going to have to just reach in, grab it, or squeeze it out. And you want to run it under some water as well to wash it out. You can take the skin off as well. You can normally just peel it off. Sometimes if it's hard to get off, you really have to rip. You can take a dry rag or a piece of paper towel and help to grab it. Now I'm going to show you quickly how to peel and devein a prawn, shrimp, or langoustines. So I'm going to leave the head on because I want to. I'm going to cut. No, I'm going to leave these on for this. All right, so now we're just going to peel the back. Just this. You see the legs? You want to break the legs off first. Okay, once they're broken off, you will see that there are little flaps on each side. Now, depending on your, if you're right or left, you can just start peeling the flaps. Be very careful when you want to keep the head. Very careful. Because it's easy to uh, break it off. Okay, voila. Now, just the tail. The tail piece is the hardest. You can take your fingers from the top and the bottom, give it a bit of a pinch to break the end, and then use your fingernails to break off the end piece. Again, this is very difficult because here, you see this point, there's actually a little piece of meat in there, and it's very difficult to get off. Okay, now we're going to devein. So you can see a little black vein. Now, two methods. You can either take a knife, a parry knife, you can cut down the vein and pull it out. Or, you can use a less intrusive method, and you can take either a toothpick, or in this case a needle, and you can go underneath the vein, and then you're going to pull it out. And you're going to try to pull everything out, from top to tail, or from tail to the head. If you pull everything out just like that, done. Very easy to do. Also, if you're leaving the head on, be sure to give it a rinse and pour a little bit of water in here because you'll get more of the, uh, well, the nasty stuff out. 
Okay, now I have my little langoustine. Now these are very delicate because they have these beautiful little pinchers on them. And the goal is to try to leave these on because it's quite unique for them. And they're a little different, the autonomy. They're a little thicker here in the bottom. If you can see right along here, they're a little thicker. So what you can do, if you can see these little bars, you have to break them. You have to use your finger now and just break each and individual section because if you don't, it's not going to come off. These are a little more difficult to peel than the shrimp. So now for a few vegetables because we're going to saute this before we add the seafood. I'm missing two ingredients. I'm missing the leeks. I don't have any and I'm also missing fennel root. I can't get any fennel for some reason. It's, you know, again with the thing going on. So I'm going to substitute for the onion and then I'm just going to peel the fennel. So real quick, the onion, we're going to julienne. Very thin. For the celery, top and bottom, bottom and top. Cut in half and then take off the sinew. You're going to dig right into it. Pull that off. Once you pull it off, you're going to cut in half. We're going to cut in half again and again. And then we're going to cut very, very, very small. As you can see, it's small. You can cut it any way you want. You don't have to do the same like I'm doing. And ooh, we have a bit of thunder outside, if you can hear that. So anyway, like I said, there's a few ways you can cut this. You can cut them in rings just by taking the top, the head, and literally cutting them in rings. Or you can cut down the middle and then slice them and you'll make, well, not rings, but you'll make basically strips like this. And then again, because I'm going to be making paella soon and we use calamari in this, you can cut them a little thicker into cubes and make little squares out of them. Now for the tomato broth. After it's simmered for about 30 minutes, you can taste it. And if it needs a little bit of salt, you can add just a little bit of salt, a pinch or more. Now we're going to take this and we're going to put this in a separate pot because I'm going to reuse the same pot. Now we're going to clean this. Also, if you want, you can put this through a sieve and pass it if you want to find soup. If not, this I cut everything very small. It doesn't really matter for me. Once the oil is hot, you're going to throw in the herbs. We're going to saute this just until they're cooked, so two or three minutes. Alright, so after everything is cooked, now you can add the rest of the tomato sauce back into this pan. You can see, we're going to add everything back. I'm going to let this come back up to a boil, and then we're going to add the clams. Also at this stage you can add, I forgot to mention, you can add the oregano. A sprig of oregano if you have fresh, if not dried, and any of the chili flakes or any other herbs that you want to add now. Now I'm using frozen clams, I'm not using fresh, so you want to do the same thing with the fresh clams if you're using fresh to rinse them off beforehand so it takes off all the dirt. You can add these in. And in the sauce, you're gonna put the top one. We're gonna let this cook for about four to five minutes and then we're going to add the rest of the ingredients. Okay. Now another thing, if you didn't strain it like I did, then you may want to add a little bit of fish stock, more water, or even a little bit of wine to add a little bit of volume and make it more liquidy. I'm going to add the mussels in three to five minutes. Then I'm going to add the calamari, all of it. Now I'm going to add the prawns. And lay these little guys on top. Now I'm going to close the lid. You're going to cook for several more minutes on medium heat. If you're adding fish to the recipe, you're going to be adding it at this stage. After you add the shrimp or the prawns, you're going to cook the prawns for a few minutes. You're going to take the fish, season it, then put the fish on top of the soup and then gently press it underneath the broth or if you have to, add a little more broth to it and then put the top on and let it cook until the fish is done. You can take a little bit of parsley as well and finish it off, sprinkle it on top, and you're ready to eat.
Also, the recipe that I'm giving you is going to be for about four people. If you're only going to make it for two, then take the recipe that I have given you and divide everything by half and it should be enough. And the next recipe is going to be paella. So stay tuned for that. And like I said, guys, this recipe is also very easy and flexible. So if you want to substitute anything at all, you don't have to use the same ingredients as me. Feel free to do it because that's what Chipino really is. It's very, very easy. It's poor man's soup. Anyway, guys, I hope you liked the video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. And I'll see you again in the next video.